Metal Gear Rising. I'll always be amazed by this game as it's the best spin-off I have ever played. Being a hardcore Metal Gear fan, the Rising was such a fresh experience and felt like I'm the strongest ninja on the battlefield. The game offers so much, and you can't ever say that it's a disappointing title. Surely it's not your usual Metal Gear stuff, but the amount of fun you can have in this game is nothing short of awesome. As a robotic ninja, your main task is to reach to the final boss and kill him to stop the outrage. There's not much of a storyline here as the game's main focus is to let the players enjoy a thrilling sense of fast-paced combat with slashing enemies into pieces. If I'm being honest, then this is one of those games that is a must-play for everyone if you're a fan of some hack and slash combat. I was immensely satisfied after finishing it as the entire experience was jam-packed with difficulty and intense combat. Now, the developers did an amazing job perfecting everything so that the gamers don't get bored. They gave us a short campaign, but it was worth it as the cutscenes and combat felt outstanding. Standing. Also, this reminds me that Metal Gear Rising's another best highlight are the cutscenes. The game offers cinematic cutscenes with some of the best visuals that doesn't do justice with its release date. Um, judging by the look of everything, you can't tell that this game was made in 2013. Even after a decade, it's highly playable and quite underrated. So I hope that more players give a shot and experience the difficult combat. Prototype. What can I say guys, this is one of my most favorite underrated open world game. I will always be thankful for getting the chance to play Prototype. Now, just to give a little bit of info about the game structure, then Prototype is an open world game where you're the ultimate main character with supernatural powers. You basically got some crazily awesome powers because of a scientific experiment. It's amazing to see that the developers put so much work into this game and gave us some of the coolest video game powers. I totally love the concept of transforming your hands into weapons of destruction. Throughout your playthrough, you will unlock many cool abilities such as blades, whip and hammer, which will prove to be helpful against different enemies or monsters. The game offers free roam, which is the best highlight as you can explore the city and kill civilians with your newfound powers. You can also use environmental objects to throw on enemies. If I have to summarize everything, then I would say that prototype is all about causing mayhem and finishing the main story. In terms of difficulty, it's quite basic but still provides a challenging experience. Now. There are two parts, but I definitely recommend playing the first one as it's the best title in my opinion. I just love the main character as he looks super awesome. Infamous Second Son we are doubling down on the topic of coolest video game powers. Infamous is a game that is known for the introduction of awesome powers. You're basically a Spider-Man, but made of concrete and neon. The game offers a big open world that is under the control of enemies and your task is to tackle different situations and complete several missions. One of the best things is the addition of the karma feature. You can't just go all berserk mode and use your powers to kill civilians or do bad deeds. The game judges you for your work and will have counter effects depending on your choices. Your decisions will change cutscenes, some missions or mechanics, not gonna lie, it's kind of sad as I really wanted to use those cool powers to have fun with the NPC just like in GTA or Prototype, but hey, it's alright. Anyways, Infamous is a game that you only need to play if you love parkour and free running combining with some of the coolest powers in video game history.
This is a game where your only job is to just run around and have fun with your powers while showcasing some cool parkour moves. All four powers play a huge role in the gameplay. The best thing about these powers is that they all have different uses. The protagonist also looks super awesome while using these powers, by the way, take a shot of a non-alcoholic drink every time I say powers in this video, but anyways, the best powers are definitely video and smoke. Most of the enemies are humans, or let's just say military soldiers and robotic vehicles. If you are in a mood for some open world fun and don't want to get bored, then Infamous Second Son will be your prime choice. You can just sit back and enjoy cruising through the open world. Devil May Cry 5 DMC5 is the definition of unstoppable awesomeness. Those dialogues and punchlines makes you feel that no monster is a match for you. Devilish arm, sibling rivalry, awesome battles, what more do you want? The game is the literal definition of how you can have fun by killing monsters in style and experiencing amazing cutscenes. EMC series is known for a lot of things, and even the previous installments have their own special stuff, but this time the developers enhanced everything and gave us all the main characters and a final tribute. I was so happy to play a full-fledged DMC game with high-level graphics and a seamless gameplay experience. The chance to play as all the main DMC characters is the best thing. It's so good to play different missions with different characters and ending the game with one of the most stunning video game battles. The fight between Virgil and Dante was pure love. Every blow felt crazy as there was so much build-up throughout the installments. The game is a prime example of how hack and slash games should be. It was such a nice feeling to use different powers of all the characters, whether it be Nero's Devil Arm or Dante's Sparta. Let us know in the comments about your favorite Dante's weapon. Mine are the nunchucks and bike. Finally, in a certain way, the game kind of gives you an entire DMC experience. It tells you what the series is about. It has everything in an updated and enhanced manner. Though, what more do you need besides Dante's Michael Jackson dance? What? Asura's Wrath. If you have played this one, then mad respect to you. Asura's Wrath is a fairly underrated game, and especially something that's hidden behind the eye of modern gamers. I bet not many of you know about this game. And here's a cool fact that this game offers some of the most gigantic video game bosses of all time. This is one of those games that you can say is a replica of God of War. If you're looking to see references about Eastern culture such as Asian, Hinduism, Buddhism, then Ashura's Wrath got you all as there is a lot of mythological stuff. Overall, it's got a great storyline and perfect visuals. The game almost feels like a movie with a classical soundtrack. Honestly, I'm not sure if most of you will like this game as it's quite old, but if you can adjust and see the ending, then I'm sure you'll be more than happy and consider this game as one of the finest experience. My favorite feature are the boss fights, as I can't stress it enough, but they felt too good to be true. Such high-level fights with fitting soundtracks and the best final boss of video games. Loki, I would also really recommend playing the DLC as it's got something amazing and highly related to the Street Fighter games. I won't spoil anything, but if you're a fan of Street Fighter games, then you must try out the DLC. Nevertheless, I just want to say that you guys should play this game solely because of the storyline, art design, visuals, and voice acting. <laughs> Yakuza Kiwami 2 Yakuza series is widely known for its satisfying combat and jam-packed open world. There's something happening at every corner and the streets are filled with the Yakuza guys. Every title in the series is the best in its own way. However, this time we are talking about one of the best Yakuza in the entire franchise. It was so satisfying to kill enemies with flashy attacks, every fight felt like a brawl. If you're someone who has never played the Yakuza series, then in short, I would say that this series is all about story, combat, and side activities. You will be amazed to see how much work the developers have put in perfecting every feature. 
the tightly open world feels too big to explore because there is enough side content to keep you busy for several hours. Karaoke, tournaments, Yakuza encounters, side missions, there's a lot of features besides the main game that I just can't describe. Overall, every single game has something different to offer in the entire franchise, so if you are new to the series, make sure to play the games in chronological order to have an amazing experience. God of War Kratos is the ultimate definition of an awesome video game character. We have all come a long way from seeing him single to finally becoming a father. It's heartwarming to look back and realizing how far we have come about Kratos' journey. The 2018 part offers everything in the best possible way. Now, just to clarify, Ragnarok is definitely the best pick and offers more than 50 bosses, but we just can't get over the 2018's installment. So if you're in a mood for some more action, then surely dive into the most recent Ragnarok. However, if you haven't played God of War yet, then you're missing out a lot. I can't stress this enough, but this game is the perfect mixture of story, combat, and cutscenes. From start to end, you grow in terms of strength and other aspects by upgrading stats. So towards the end, Kratos just turns into a whole nother being in strength. The amount of fun you're going to have on the father-son journey is nothing short of amazing. It's filled with intense battles, amazing characters, stunning areas with beautiful visuals. Seeing Kratos grow and experience fatherhood is such a heartfelt as we all know this is the character who slayed multiple gods without any remorse. Loki, the prime Kratos would never have thought that someday he will be calling his son boy all the time. In fact, the second boss fight basically tells you about what's in store for you in this game. Baldur's fight was so such a treat and a complete shock to introduce such a high level fight in the first 30 minutes. Spider-Man 2 Alright, let's talk about Spider-Man 2, a game that truly lets you live out your superhero fantasies in the most fun and exhilarating way possible. If you love swinging through the city, fighting bad guys, and feeling like a real hero, this game is a must play. In Spider-Man 2, you step into the shoes of Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man. The story follows Spidey as he battles iconic villains and deals with the ups and downs of being a superhero. The narrative is engaging and filled with moments that capture the essence of Spider-Man, balancing his hero duties with his personal life. The standout feature of Spider-Man 2 is the web swinging. The mechanics are incredibly smooth and satisfying, swinging through the skyscrapers of New York City feels amazing, and you can really feel the momentum and speed as you navigate the urban jungle. It's easy to lose hours just enjoying the sheer thrill of swinging around the city. Combat in Spider-Man 2 is another highlight. It's fluid, dynamic, and packed with stylish moves. You can punch, kick, and web-sling your way through hordes of enemies using a mix of acrobatics and gadgets. The game encourages creativity in fights, allowing you to use the environment to your advantage and pull off spectacular combos. The city of New York is beautifully rendered and full of life. From the bustling streets to the towering skyscrapers, every part of the city feels alive and vibrant. There are tons of side activities to dive into from stopping random crimes to helping citizens in need. These activities not only add to the fun, but also make you feel like a true hero patrolling the city. One of the most enjoyable aspects of Spider-Man 2 is its sense of humor. The game captures Spider-Man's witty and lighthearted nature perfectly. The dialogue is sharp and funny, with Spidey throwing quips and jokes even in the heat of battle. It adds a lot of charm to the game and keeps things lighthearted and entertaining. And as for the graphics, so what I really loved about the Spider-Man 2 on the PS5 is the lightning. The game looks so much colorful and brighter compared to the 2018 game. Spider-Man 2 is packed with content. The main story missions are exciting, but there are also plenty of side quests, collectibles, and challenges to keep you busy. Each one offers something new and fun, ensuring you're never short of things to do. In summary, Spider-Man 2 is a game that's all about having fun. It perfectly captures the thrill of being Spider-Man, from swinging through the city to battling iconic villains. If you're looking for a game that combines an engaging story, fluid gameplay, and a lot of heart, Spider-Man 2 is a perfect choice. 
dive into the adventure and enjoy being the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Cyberpunk. This game is the literal definition of immersive playthrough. Cyberpunk is a great game, and yes, it's coming from someone who never finished the game until recently. If I am being honest, then I am one of those players who was really excited for this game and felt extremely disappointed when it first came out because there were so many bugs and glitches which made me feel like the developers released it without finishing it completely. Therefore, I decided to quit, but just recently I gave it another chance and finally managed to complete it. Now, I can confirm that I had the most amazing experience because this is one of those games that shows what future gaming is going to be in terms of open world. I know that I might be over exaggerating here, but this is the truth guys. There's a lot of stuff that you can do in Cyberpunk which makes it stand out among the other open world titles. The game is packed with modification, neon buildings, futuristic streets, cyborg looking humans, and so much more. Everything is fixed in 2024 and Cyberpunk is nothing like when it was first released. This will be a great time to dive into this game if you're looking to spend over 100 hours and want to experience an engaging storyline. Open world games are sometimes known to be boring, but this is not the case in Cyberpunk. This is a prime example of how much content you can pack and give the players tons of side activities to keep the boredom away. So every moment is going to feel amazing leading to 100 hours of playthrough. Loki Cyberpunk is the best choice if you specifically want to feel a futuristic immersive environment. Days Gone. This is one of those games where you are either gonna stop after the first two hours or have an all out blast and complete the entire game. Days Gone is one of the best open world zombie game I have ever played. One of the best things is definitely the bike, it's just so fun to drive it around in this post apocalyptic world. The bike gives the feeling of being an awesome biker who can kill zombies like ants. Also, the game gives you complete freedom to upgrade and customize your bike. I never thought that I would put more effort in my bike than in the actual story. Now we all know how great the game is, so it's not worth it to explain each and every feature, but I still want to say that you're missing out on a lot if you have never played this game. I agree that the first hours feel like a drag, but if you get past the first few hours, get used to with the core gameplay and start to get immersed in the story, it's definitely one of the most immersive open world games, and sometimes spooky too with all those nasty zombie freaks around. The game has everything in it. It's definitely not your normal zombie game with only shooting mindlessly around. Days Gone has amazing visuals, engaging missions, great characters, one of the best stories, and most importantly an awesome bike. Nevertheless, do not miss out on this game. Days Gone is the definition of zombie apocalyptic immersive experience. Witcher 3 Witcher 3 is great in every possible way. Now, I'm not exaggerating anything. Sure, there's some audience who expect a lot more and finds the game boring at the start or clunky. I've noticed a few comments on this or maybe they just want something to hook them in from the start, but I believe no one's gonna say that the game is stupid or boring after finishing it. I'm someone who completed the main storyline, explored the open world, checked different inventory, and even watched the live action. And honestly, I can say that this is a masterpiece and surely deserves appreciation. Waited until you found me, but you know me. Patience has never been my strong suit. It's good to see you, Gerald. I 
Also, don't forget there are gamers who are still spending insane hours and using mods. This explains how good The Witcher 3 is. I think the most common problem players face is the pacing. Witcher 3 starting hours are quite slow which turns off the players and makes them quit. However, you just have to be patient and get through. There's a lot of stuff waiting for you guys such as the immersive environment, rewarding exploration, interesting cutscenes, and the best DLC. My favorite thing to do in this game was to see different places and progress the storyline. You won't believe it, but it honestly feels like a mix of multiple mini sub-stories. I believe that everyone needs to finish the game before they start criticizing it. Witcher 3 is known for more than just an immersive environment and gameplay. Nevertheless, I'm really hyped that developers are making another project. I hope that we get Witcher 4 soon. Dragon's Dogma. This is one of my favorite picks from this list solely because of how much of a masterpiece an underrated Dragon's Dogma is. We all know about popular big open world games, but sometimes it's fascinating to see that such an underrated game can be highly engaging. Before I talk about the amazing stuff, I want to say that even though there's a sequel, I would still recommend playing the original. The game does have poor visuals, but it's nothing that cannot be fixed with a simple graphics mod file. The only reason I suggest you guys to go with the second part is if you are not a big fan of playing the older games with outdated visuals. Also, nothing beats the original's DLC. Now, Dragon's Dogma is a game where your main goal is to travel and explore while completing certain quests to become strong and worthy of slaying the dragon. From the first look, the game does feel basic as your only goal is to kill the dragon, but trust me, it's nothing short of a masterpiece. You will be spending countless hours exploring different areas and finding amazing weapons. The game also gives you an option to choose different classes with unique weapons. Um, there are also several monsters scattered through the open world which will definitely give you a challenging experience. Also, if you are in a mood for some more difficulty, then do play the DLC as it's extremely tough even after finishing the campaign. Honestly, as someone who finished games like Witcher and Skyrim, I can confirm that I was totally impressed by what the game contains. Dragon's Dogma was ahead of its time. This is the game that will take you on an adventurous journey filled with multiple landscapes such as caves, underground, abandoned buildings, capital city, labyrinth, and more. Baldur's Gate 3. Alright, let's chat about Baldur's Gate 3, a legendary action RPG you need to experience. Developed by Larian Studios and released in 2023, this game is all about epic adventures and making choices that shape your story. You play as a hero caught up in a big, magical conflict. Imagine diving into a world full of magic, monsters, and mystery. The graphics are top-notch, making every location from dark dungeons to lush forests look amazing. The story is epic and lets you make important decisions. You can shape your character's path with the choices you make, which affect how the story unfolds. There are tons of interesting characters to meet and recruit to your party, each with their own unique stories. Queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. Combat in Baldur's Gate 3 is turn-based and strategic. You need to think carefully about your moves and use your abilities wisely. It's challenging but super rewarding when you figure out the best strategies. What makes Baldur's Gate 3 special is its depth and detail. The game feels like a living, breathing world where your actions matter. You can interact with almost everything. And there are endless ways to play and explore. For me, playing Baldur's Gate 3 is like being the hero in a grand fantasy adventure. The story, the characters, and the gameplay they all come together to create an unforgettable experience. If you haven't played Baldur's Gate 3 yet, you're in for a treat. It's a must play for anyone who loves RPGs and epic stories. Fallout New Vegas. 
All right, let's dive into Fallout New Vegas, a legendary action RPG that you've got to experience. Developed by Obsidian Entertainment and released in 2010, this game throws you into a post-apocalyptic world full of adventure, danger, and tough choices. You play as a courier left for dead in the desert, out to find your attackers and uncover a bigger conspiracy. You exploring the vast wasteland filled with ruined cities, desert landscapes, and quirky towns? The graphics may be a bit dated, but the world feels alive and rich with detail. The story in Fallout New Vegas is fantastic. You're free to make choices that affect how the game unfolds. You can ally with different factions, each with their own goals and philosophies, or go your own way. The characters you meet are memorable, from quirky companions to powerful leaders. Combat is fun and varied. You have a mix of guns, melee weapons, and even some weird sci-fi gadgets. The VAT system lets you target specific parts of enemies, adding a strategic element to fights. What makes Fallout New Vegas special is its depth and freedom. The game lets you play how you want. Whether you're a hero, a villain, or something in between, the world reacts to your choices. There's also a ton of side quests and secrets to discover, making every playthrough feel fresh. For me, playing Fallout New Vegas is like stepping into a wild, unpredictable adventure. The story is gripping, the world is immersive, and the freedom to make your own path is incredibly satisfying. If you haven't played Fallout New Vegas yet, you're missing out on one of the best RPGs ever made. It's a must play for any fan of the genre. Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Alright, let's dive into Mass Effect Legendary Edition, a must play for any RPG fan. Released by Bioware in 2021, this collection brings together the epic story of Commander Shepard and his crew in one amazing package. Picture this, you're exploring the galaxy, hopping from one star system to another, meeting strange aliens, and making decisions that affect the fate of the universe. The graphics have been updated, so the worlds and characters look better than ever. The story is what makes Mass Effect Legendary Edition truly special. You get to play as Commander Shepard, an intergalactic hero tasked with saving the galaxy from a looming threat. Your choices shape the story in big ways. Do you make friends or enemies? Do you follow the rules or break them? Every decision matters and impacts how the story unfolds. Combat in this game is a mix of strategy and action. You can customize your squad, choose your weapons, and use special powers in battle. It's all about finding the right balance and using your team's strengths to overcome challenges. What makes this edition stand out is the way it bundles together the original Mass Effect trilogy with improved graphics, better gameplay tweaks, and all the DLC. It's like getting a supersized version of an epic space opera. You get to experience the full journey of Shepard with all the highs and lows. For me, playing Mass Mass Effect Legendary Edition is like diving into a huge immersive space adventure where you get to be the hero, the characters are memorable, the story is gripping, and the choices you make are incredibly impactful. If you haven't played it yet, you're in for a treat. This game is a must experience for any fan of epic sci-fi RPGs. Yakuza like a dragon. Alright, let's get into Yakuza Like a Dragon, a game that's an absolute blast from start to finish. Released by Sega in 2020, this one takes the Yakuza series in a new direction, and it's seriously worth your time. So, picture this your Ichiban Kasuga, a dude who's just gotten out of prison after taking the fall for a crime he didn't commit. Life's looking pretty rough until he gets tossed into the wild streets of Yokohama. It's like he's trying to start over, but the world's got other plans. What's super cool about this game is the shift to turn-based combat. If you've played the older Yakuza games, you know they were all about real-time brawling. But now, it's all about planning your moves and watching Ichiban and his crew pull off some seriously wild attacks. It's like watching a live-action RPG battle unfold right in front of you. The city of Yokohama is like a playground of crazy side quests. From managing a business empire to singing your heart out in karaoke, there's never a dull moment. And the characters? Oh man, Ichiban's gang is a motley crew of lovable misfits who will make you laugh, cry, and cheer them on. The story's got its serious moments, but it's balanced out with some really quirky and funny stuff. Ichiban's passion to become a hero and his heart of gold make you root for him from the start. The game feels like a mix of epic drama and wacky fun. 
playing Yakuza like a dragon is like jumping into a crazy, heartfelt adventure where you never know what's coming next. It's got the perfect blend of epic storytelling and offbeat humor. If you're up for a game that's as wild as it is heartfelt, give it a go. You won't regret it. Disco Elysium. You can handle it. Let's dive into Disco Elysium, a game that's like no other. Released in 2019, this one's a real gem if you're into deep stories and complex characters. So, you're a detective who's just woken up with a massive hangover, a pile of regrets, and no memory of who you are. Welcome to Rivakul, a city that's as gritty and messed up as your detective skills are rusty. You've got to piece together your past while solving a murder that's hanging over the city like a dark cloud. What makes Disco Elysium stand out is its focus on dialogue and choices. Forget about traditional combat, this game is all about talking, thinking, and making decisions. You'll be rolling dice, managing skills, and trying to make sense of a world that's as twisted as it is fascinating. Yes, I'm going to unplug the microphone, okay? The writing in this game is top notch. It's like reading a really good novel filled with sharp, witty, and often darkly humorous lines. The characters you meet are rich and layered, and the story is full of surprises. The city of Rivako feels alive with every corner revealing a new piece of the puzzle. What's also cool is how you can shape your character's personality and abilities, you can choose to be a hard-boiled detective or a more unconventional thinker. Your choices affect how the story unfolds and how the characters react to you. Playing Disco Elysium is like getting lost in a noir novel where you're the main character. The depth of the story and the unique approach to gameplay make it an unforgettable experience. If you haven't checked it out yet, dive in and get ready for a deep, engaging adventure that'll keep you thinking long after you've put the game down. Dragon Age Inquisition so Dragon Age Inquisition is pretty epic, you play as the Inquisitor, tasked with saving the world from a massive demon invasion. The story is full of surprises and keeps you hooked with its deep lore and complex characters. The world is gorgeous, think lush forests, snowy mountains, and everything in between. It's like wandering through a beautiful fantasy novel. What's really cool is that your choices actually matter. You decide how the story unfolds and how characters react to you. It's awesome to see your decisions shape the game's world. You you get to create your character with a ton of options, you can pick different classes and skills making the combat both strategic and fun, but be warned, there's a lot to manage skills, gear, stats and all that. It can get a bit overwhelming if you're not into that kind of detail. Some parts of the game can feel slow, and there's a lot of talking. If you're more into action, the constant dialogue might drag a bit. I closed that thing. Overall, if you love deep RPGs with rich storytelling and a big world to explore, Dragon Age Inquisition is definitely worth playing. It's a grand adventure that'll keep you engaged and entertained. Call it the breach. It grows larger with each passing hour. Unless we Persona 5 Royal. Alright, let's dive into Persona 5 Royal. If you haven't played this one yet, get ready for a wild ride through high school life and supernatural adventures. You're playing as a high school student in Tokyo who's living a double life. By day, you're just trying to get through school, make friends, and survive your teachers. But by night, you and your group of fandom thieves are out to change the world, battling twisted, corrupted hearts in a surreal alternate realm known as the metaverse. The story in Persona 5 Royal is a roller coaster. It's packed with drama, humor, and even a bit of romance. You'll meet all sorts of colorful characters, each with their own stories and struggles. Building relationships with them is one of the best parts of the game. Whether you're helping them out with their personal issues or just hanging out, it adds a lot of depth to the experience. The game's the visual style is really striking with a unique art direction that makes everything pop. The stylish menus, flashy combat, and vibrant characters all contribute to an unforgettable aesthetic. 
Now, let's talk gameplay. The turn-based combat is super engaging. You're not just pressing buttons randomly, you've got to think about your moves, exploit enemy weaknesses, and use your persona's magical creatures that represent different aspects of your personality strategic. It's like a strategic puzzle mixed with cool, stylish battles. One of the standout features is how Persona 5 Royal expands on the original game. You get new story elements, additional characters, and a bunch of new activities to dive into. There's even a new semester to explore lore which adds extra depth to the story, but as much as I love this game, there are a few things that might not be for everyone. The game's pacing can be slow at times and there's a lot of dialogue. If you're not into deep, story-driven games with lots of talking, it might feel a bit heavy. Also, the game is pretty long, so if you're short on time, be prepared for a lengthy commitment. Overall, Persona 5 Royal is a fantastic game if you're into rich stories, unique characters, and stylish gameplay. It's like diving into a high-energy anime with a compelling plot and lots of heart. If you enjoy games that mix everyday life with epic adventures, give this one a try. You won't be disappointed. Monster Hunter World Alright, let's dive into Monster Hunter World. If you haven't tried it yet, here's the scoop. This game is all about hunting down massive monsters in a beautifully crafted world. You're a hunter in a world where gigantic creatures roam freely. Your main goal is to track down these monsters and take them out. The game starts with you joining the Research Commission, a group dedicated to studying the wildlife of the new world. Your job? To hunt these monsters, gather materials, and uncover the secrets of this new land. The game is divided into missions that usually involve involve tracking a monster, battling it, and then carving up its remains for resources. These resources are used to craft better gear and weapons. Each monster hunt is like a mini adventure finding clues, setting traps, and using your environment to your advantage. Monster Hunter World doesn't have a traditional story, but it does have a compelling narrative about the ecosystem and the balance between humans and monsters. As you progress, you'll encounter various characters and factions, each with their own goals and stories that add depth to the game world. Hmm. You ready? Get to your posts now! The combat is a big highlight. You've got a range of weapons and tools at your disposal, and the fight Fights are dynamic and challenging. You need to learn the monster's patterns, prepare your gear, and strategize your approach. It's not just about hacking away at a beast, it's about outsmarting it. The world itself is gorgeous and full of diverse environments, from lush jungles to arid deserts. Each area is teeming with life and detail, making exploration a big part of the fun. On the flip side, the game can be a bit overwhelming at first with its complex mechanics and controls, and if you're not into grinding for materials or working through challenging hunts, it might not be your cup of tea. Overall, Monster Hunter World is an exciting and immersive game where you get to become a skilled hunter in a stunningly detailed world. If you enjoy strategic combat and exploring vast, vibrant environments, this game is definitely worth checking out.